Hi, this is a chart that we're going to build over the next few minutes. It's a fairly typical chart in finance. It uh, shows the price of a large public company in the UK, in this case, MNG and Asset Manager. Over the last few years, the x-axis is a date. We can see it covers from 2019 to uh, June 2022, uh, the current date. The blue line represents the price of the share in pence. We've got the uh, axis label here on the right hand side. The latest price was about um, 216 pence. The uh, red and green bars represent the volume traded, the number of tra shares traded every day. We've got an axis here on the left hand side, a completely different axis, and that we can see the number of shares traded. We've got a relative date filter up here. So if we wanted to look over the last six weeks, then we could do so. And we can look over it over the last six months, for example, as well. The columns are green when the price goes up during the day and red when it goes down during the day. So let's get started and build it. Now let's get the data that we need. The links are going to be in the comments below. We've actually based this chart on a chart from Yahoo Finance. Here it is. And Yahoo Finance also provide us the, the data, the historical prices, and we can just come over here and download it. But you don't need to do that because I've already downloaded it to this public GitHub site. And what you can do is you can just click on the raw button and this brings the URL up here, which we can just import into Power BI Desktop. A quick word about the data. What we've got is a row for every date since uh, late 2019. It's a daily price series, and we've got five different prices. In fact, we'll be plotting just the close price. And as well as that, uh, we've got the volume at the end in a number of shares traded. Okay, I've launched Power BI Desktop. I've got the May 2022 edition. I'm just going to do a bit of setup to make sure everything goes smoothly. In options and settings, I've set all the preview features on. We're going to need some of those. In the current file data load, I've switched off auto date time. We won't need that in this example. And finally, in the report settings, I've switched on, we'll switch on modern visual tooltips. Let's import the data directly from the GitHub website. We're going to get data. It's going to be from the web. We'll paste in that URL. It's in the description. It gives us a preview of the data. We're going to load it directly into Power BI Desktop. Here's the field list with all the columns. And if we have a look at the data pane, we can see the data exactly as we saw it in the GitHub and also in the Yoohoo website. Now let's build our chart. We're going to use this chart that's a line and stacked column chart. I'll just click on it and it puts the template up on the report canvas. I will come along and I will add a date to the chart. It'll put it on the axis. I'll add the close price and it puts that on the bar column axis. I actually want it on the line axis and I'll take my volume and drag it onto my column axis. And here we have our basic chart. Now we're going to format the chart. The first thing that we'll do is give it a good title. If I come to general and into title, I'll remove the automatic title and I'll give it a decent title and I'll center it. And I'll also give that title a background color. Let's do the same for the axis titles. I'm going to come into visual. I'm going to come into my Y axis. Notice we've got a Y axis and a secondary Y axis. The first Y axis is the column axis. I'll come into title there and I'll change that to number of shares traded, a more useful title. And I'm going to do the same for my secondary axis. That's the uh, right hand axis, the line axis. I'll give it a, a title of price pens. And to give a visual cue that this right axis refers to the line, I'll make the title of the axis in the same color as the line and I'll also do the same for the values. Now let's add a relative date slice to the chart. I'm going to click on my slicer visual. I'll position it at the top of the page and I will 
add the date field onto the slicer. That gives us a standard slider slicer. I can use that to slice in, but I'm going to click on this little drop down here to make it a relative date slicer. So now if I wanted to, I can look at the last six months, or I can even look at the last six weeks, for example. Our next job is to make those bars either green or red, depending on when the price goes up or down during the day. And to do that, I'm going to have to create a calculated column. I'll go to my data pane to do that. I'm going to click on new column. I'm going to call my column intraday price change. And I'm going to define it as the close price, the price at the end of the day, less the open price. That's the price at the start of the day. And I'll tick that off. And there we are, we see it here, and we see it here, and a quick check. If I have a look at the first date, 21st of October, we've got an open price of 220, a close of 218, which is an intraday price change of minus two. Let's use our new calculated column to uh, set the colors of our bars. So come back here, select the visual, I'm going to go back into columns. We'd already created this as a kind of default gray, but I'm going to press the little FX next to it. I'm going to choose rules to format the color. I'm, I'm going to be based it on a new calculated column. And what I'm going to say, if the value is greater, if we move that, that just becomes minimum. We'll make that a number and less than zero. Then what I'm going to do is have some sort of red and add a new rule if it's greater than zero a number and less than whatever the maximum is then I will make it into a green and I'll click OK and our columns now are the right colors depending on if the price goes up or down during the day. The final thing that we want to do to the chart is to make the columns smaller. The most important thing on the chart is the price line and the columns are only of secondary importance, the volume is not so important. We're going to make it so that the maximum height of the column that we see is only a quarter of the vertical height of the plot. To do that, we're going to have to create a measure. Let's go to new measure. Let's call our measure y-axis range max. And what we're going to say is we're going to use a max function of the volume. Let's tick that off. And here we can see our measure in the field list. Let's see how our measure is going to change when we change the value in the relative date slicer. To do that, I want to see what the measure value is. So I'm going to create a bit of space here. I'm going to add a card visual. I'll move it into the space just temporarily. We'll get rid of it later on. And what I'll do is I'll move my measure there so we can see the value 24 million. And that value is because if we have a look here, uh, the largest volume that we can see in the last six weeks is 24 million. But as we come over here and if we change the filter, obviously we've got a different value here because on the first day of trading, we've got this massive value up here, which is 135 million. Our measure works as expected, so we can now remove that card. We can put back our date filter. What we're going to do, however, is multiply it by four, simply because we want the total kind of range to be about four times the maximum. And finally, what we can do is we're gonna come over here and we're going to click on our visual. We're going to go to our Y axis we're going to dynamically set the maximum of the range to be equal to our field value. Let's come over here and choose it. And as we do that, we'll see that those bars become suddenly much smaller. Again, for comparison purposes, if I go back to six weeks, there we can see the bars are much smaller. So we've built this chart in fairly short order using relatively straightforward techniques. What happens though if we want to extend and improve the chart above and beyond what the Yahoo chart has given us? So for example, uh, we've just looked at one company here, M&G. We might want to choose between several companies to analyze.
We've only looked at one price, the close price, but the data also gave us the open price, the high and the low price. We might want to choose between those as well. This data for this particular company only goes back three years, but other data for other companies goes back 20, 30 years. So when we bring that in, we might not want to look at daily intervals, but monthly intervals as well. Finally, we've got a perfectly ser serviceable relative date filter here but it would be nice to have lots of lovely preset buttons that we can just click on one month uh, one year year to date and so on and to do that in a way that is some elegant tax rather than kind of fiddly bookmarks these are all challenges that we're going to solve in our next video in a few weeks time i look forward to seeing you on that one thank you very much for watching